I leave the tranquil coastal city of Entebbe and drive up the highway 50 miles to the capital of Uganda, Kampala. My driver asks me at which hotel I am staying. I tell him the American Recreational Association. I am relieved when he says he knows exactly where it is. He tells me it is the only hotel with an outdoor pool. I chose the American Recreational Association at the recommendation of a U.S. government official I had met at Entebbe. He said it was a hotel, recreation center with two tennis courts, a pool, a fully stocked weight room, a conference center used by NGOs, and a country club for expats. I chose the lowest priced room for 60 U.S. dollars which had one queen-size bed and a shared bathroom. Since they were all booked up, they upgraded me to two double beds, which had its own private bathroom and an air conditioning unit. The bathrooms were very clean and modern. The shower had strong water pressure and never ran out of hot water. From what I can tell, the water was treated and softened. When traveling, it's important to use the safe, so I keep my credit cards and passport and uh, my money in these safes. They're pretty easy to uh, work and operate, and uh, in all the countries that I've been, I've never been robbed or it's never been cracked. Once I've settled in and unpacked all my gear, it's time to connect to the internet and check my emails. It costs three US dollars an hour. Connectivity is provided by a wireless internet service provider. I have to get a temporary user ID and password from the front desk. Once I have my access code, I type it in at the Infocom login screen. Thankfully, when I shut down my laptop, the timer stops so I don't waste my access time. Because I'm a redhead and I don't tan, I just fry and fry bad. This is what I wear and uh, when I go out I make quite a spectacle of myself. And kids are always calling me Mzungu, Mzungu, which means a uh, white foreigner, uh, equivalent to a uh, gringo. I don't know if it's good or bad, but uh, I have to do this in order to protect myself from the head uh, or from the sun, especially since I'm bald and I've already got a bad sunburn on top of my head. I walk out of my hotel onto the hot, dry, dusty street called McKindy, which is a main thoroughfare in South Kampala. My hotel is located at the top of one of the seven hills in Kampala and I have a good view of the city below. This woman is shopping for tonight's dinner and is having a chicken slaughtered. On every street corner are motorcycle taxis which are called Boda Bodas. As you can see from the woman in the green dress, they are widely used by locals because they are inexpensive even though they are considered very dangerous due to collisions at intersections such as these. My destination is a market and slum along a railroad track. It is so big it can be seen from this satellite photo. I call this insane and dangerous traffic circle which connects Queen Anne Avenue, Katwe Avenue, and the Entebbe Highway the coke bottle traffic circle. These wreckers are patiently awaiting their turn to tow away freshly wrecked cars, which happen about every 15 minutes. The railroad tracks are also used as a footpath to avoid the congestion and dangers of crossing the street. There are no traffic lights. No rules. It's dog eat dog. Aggression is the rule. Courtesy is the exception. Cars will not stop, so I must run into traffic and dodge my way across the street. All the while, drivers are calling me Zungu. Incredibly, I managed to cross the street and reach the outer edge of the market slum. I'm overwhelmed by the heat, the noise, the sights, but most of all, the smells. It is an amalgamation of tribes, cultures, religions, cuisines, humans, and animals. 
To get to the slums, I must first go through the market. I quickly experience Ugandan's animosity towards cameras, not because of the Westerners belief it will capture their soul, but because of the financial exploitation. Ugandans believe their image will be published, making the photographer thousands of dollars, and they will receive nothing and remain poor. I can sense the tension and uneasiness in the air. I hear the question in their eyes. What are you doing here? Go away and leave us alone. A freight train is coming and the people move off the tracks. I'm amazed at how fast the train is rolling. I'm assuming they are highballing to prevent unwanted passengers from hitching a ride. I continue walking along the train tracks, followed by a herd of children. I'm amazed at how thriving and active the market in the slum is. Being on the fringe of society in the city, trash collection is a luxury, and most people dump their trash here, which is then picked through by the birds and people. I've gone far enough and turned back. I notice that the train track trussels are made of cement. I assume it's so they won't be dug up and used for firewood. I get back to the bridge and decide if I want to take a Boda Boda or minibus back to the hotel as I'm getting tired. Unfortunately, I don't know how to use them and I'm concerned I'll end up on the wrong side of town. I continue walking, exploring, and filming. I'm amazed at what I see and wish I could film it close up. I tried offering money, but it was rejected and I was told to go away. The closest I could get was to put my camera on a tripod and zoom in, which attracts a lot of attention. I walk to the bus stop, determined to take one of these white minibuses back to the hotel. I walk from bus to bus, asking drivers if they're going up McKinley Road. Most laugh and call me Mzungu. I ask a Boda Boda driver how much to my hotel. He replies back a thousand Boda shillings Boda. or 50 US cents. Because Joseph was a safe driver and let me film the ride and him, I gave him 8,000 shillings or 4 US dollars. My name is Joseph. My name is Joseph. <laughs> and I drive Boda Boda. I am dang Boda Boda. Across the street from my hotel is a little clothing shop and you won't believe who is working behind the counter. 
After taking a short nap and a shower, I went looking for food. A Brit had recommended a restaurant called a pork joint, which serves roasted pork and is eaten Ugandan style, which means by hand. Looking from the cars in the parking lot, it looks like a popular and upscale place. I am served three skewers of pork, stewed bananas with tomato sauce, collard greens, and an avocado. At first, I was intrigued at the flashlight and note on my nightstand, warning of blackouts, and apologizing for the inconvenience it will cause. Well, my guest card does say that uh, Ugandan power is unpredictable and uh, that if they do lose power, they will not run the generators, but will have given us a flashlight uh, in order to find our way about. Luckily, I've got my little headlamp. It's uh, 9 p.m. here, and the lights went totally out, and when they did, the whole city gave a cry. People were hooting and hollering, and I thought there was some kind of festival going on. But uh, I guess this happens a lot. So only thing I can do at this point is um, use my headlamp and read my book. So that's what I'm going to do. Good night.